you have to relate to having parts made. This is uh, Cape Thorn Hall, and this is the Jaguar Enthusiast Club Classic Car Show. Take you over to see mine first. Go and have a look. XJ8 1998, and then we'll go and have a look at the others in the in the courtyard. Indeed. So. XJ8 1998 Metallic Go, is it Topaz? Topaz. Topaz, they call it, yes, very nice. Not wholly sure what EY is offhand, but it's Ray. He's called Ray. Oh, he's called Ray. Can I walk past you? Yeah, you're right, you go past. Thank you. Oh, he's a boy. He's a boy. He's called Ray. Alright. <laughs> Have a look inside. I've got a Welsh boy called Zai in my there we go. As they said in the 1970s uh, press advert campaign for Jaguar, as you drive home in one of these, it makes you feel your life hasn't been entirely without success. <laughs> like another, another campaign was oh. a quiet voice of authority. That's interesting. Point two V eight just been converted, swapped engine, swapped to a steel liner. Is actually out of a two thousand and one. Alan, are you going to take us round to see the others? Indeed. Well, uh, folks, we have a courtyard full of beautiful Jaguars. So let's take a start. We have an XJR here, about 10 years old, Yorkshire registered. We have Noah, what continued up pathetic, we shall be using an art today. But this is a 1975 76 XJS registered in uh, Burnham. In Burnham. RO, which is Northamptonshire, mid 80s, nice XJ6 there. Uh, it's hard to check. Private plate, nice XJR, nice silver colour. I guess Roy owns it. I'd be surprised if he didn't. Private plate, a rich origin of Northern Ireland. Nice blue colour XJR. Another Northern Ireland plate. The current plate, mod nectar, nice color. The next go six. The next go six. This one dates from 1990 or, or 91. Its registration indicates it's from Birmingham. Again, a uh, Northern Irish plate being used as a personalized plate. Daimler version extension, Daimler Sovereign of course, very nice, a sort of gunmetal grey colour, no doubt was a fancy colour for that. Oh we have a nice puss here, big cat, private play, XJR, beautiful light blue colour, nice body kit, very nice, often, this vehicle is often seen at shows. Next vehicle is Scottish, about 12 years old. It's XJ6, 8, 7, etc. Uh, metallic silver, very nice. We then have a Manchester registered vehicle. Again. Nice XJ car. Beautiful m m metallic purple maroon colour. About. 2005 or thereabouts. We then have a, a, a Silver S type, it's uh, West Yorkshire registered from its registration. Um, 
I'd say it was about 14, 14 years old or, or thereabouts. 15 maybe. Thank you. Uh, we have a Birmingham registered 2001 example. Metallic gold S type. We have a Mark II 2.4 litre. Sorry, uh, 67 68 registered. Nice, nice cr creamy white car. XJ67 private plate. So with a Northern Ireland plate, probably serving as a private plate. Oh, it's possible it was originally a Northern Ireland registration, I doubt it. Metallic silver, nice vehicle. The villain's vehicle from the Sweeney, of course. <laughs> and we have... XJ678, thank you a bag, private plane, world blue, nice circle. For the modernists, for the modernists, a very dark royal blue XF with a private plate. Again, a fancy private plate, not really Walsall. XJ78, because it's a private plate, I'm not sure of the age, but it's quite modern. Five, 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 bomb. Well, would originally have been Birmingham, but it's been used as a private plate on a bright red XJR. Very nice. <laughs> an authentic Manchester registered light metallic bluey type. 1966. Immaculate wire wheels. Nice motor. Well, this is Ron's car. It's an XJS B12. It's in a gun metal silver grey. It would have been originally a West Midlands registration, Birmingham area, but been used as a private plate, so I wouldn't like to guess the age. It is newer than the registration, possibly. Manchester registered, XJ8 I think, 2001, light metallic blue, nicely turned out. Next, Staffordshire. Um, 1990s XJS, metallic maroon, metallic purple. Another XJS, this one in turquoise with a private plate. 1980s, I would guess. Maybe early 90s. XJR, Cheshire registered, about 10 years old. Converted. Can't remember what HP is. Yeah. Certainly not. <laughs> certainly not a source. Certainly not Buster Source. Uh, but nice turquoise XJS. Hard stop. Uh, Gun Ma a Manchester registered, uh, two, uh, 2012. XF. Gun metal silver. Nice. Circa 1997 XJR metallic silver. North Wales registered for Northamptonshire. Authentic London registration, early to mid 1950s. XK150 Jaguar Sports hard top, British Racing Green. A racing driver's car in his own time, I guess. Private plate, Royal Blue X, X KR, hard top, very nice. And a similar silver 
Yorkshire are just an example, about 10 years old. Nine years old. XJS, private clay, nice rear spoiler, nice mid blue metallic. I'm going to do the inside. It's actually a 1993.6. And the bottom. <laughs> Mark II Jaguar in metallic mid blue. Uh, despite its authentic looking registration, FF is a replacement sequence for a part of Lincolnshire which was never fully issued. So I'm guessing this is a replacement registration. I'd call this car circa 1959-60. Small engine 2.4 litre. Then we have a Jaguar XK1. 50, hard top, authentic Surrey registration, circa maybe 1954, 5, 6. Have a radio, oh gosh, early example, if, if authentic. Mark 2, Jaguar 3. Just discovered a 1959 car, the Merlin one. So I've got that slightly wrong, only by a couple of years. Now we've got a Mark II, Jaguar 3.4, authentic uh, registration. It's nominally, the, nominally the same area as Mr. Happer's car. This is a real example. I'd say circa 19, circa 1958-59. Nice woodwork. Oh. Um. Luton registered, or possibly Luton registered, or possibly a lease vehicle. Many lease vehicles are registered in Luton. Uh, XKR, nice light metallic blue, hard top. Soft top XKH, XKR. Black. Its registration indicates Greater Manchester, 1999 or thereabouts. This one you can win for a pound. XKR, Manchester registered, 2007. Nice metallic silver, wouldn't mind it myself. We've both entered the draw, haven't we? We have indeed. Um, circa, looks like a private ish plate, but it's purporting to be about 1991, sorry. Metallic maroon, nice yellow stripe, black XJ6, um, London registry, I think. About 1987, 88. Jaguar badge. Another XJ6 private plate, metallic maroon. This one's got a white stripe. Another XK. One. This one XK one. 50 also, convertible, genuine London registration from the mid to late 1950s, British Racing Green. XJS, nice spoiler, private plate, purports to be from Jaguar in Oxford, uh, darkish metallic blue, nicely turned out, V12. Jaguar XKR, Kent registered, late 1990s. Particularly nice shade of metallic blue. Darker metallic blue, but still quite bright. Cheshire registered, 2003 XKR, converted. With the top down, it's about to rate. Hope it's close. So, if it need to join, Red Rose. Uh, Red Rose. Red Rose. Red Rose. Red Rose. Red Rose. 
1973 XJ6. I think JM is Leicester off hand, may be wrong. Extended wide wheels, replacement wheels of a very substantial width, just like me. And a uh, beautifully turned out example for a 41 year old car. Metallic gold XJR. Hang on. Hang on a minute. Metallic gold XJR with a teddy bear at the wheel. Four litre. Circa. 1997, uh, Preston Registry. XJ8, about the same age, 1998. Royal Dot Blue, very nice, London Registry. Another XJ seven or eight, seemingly a nineteen ninety one or ninety two registration. I think BJ's Berkshire off hand, somewhere in that general area, home counties. This is Cheshire registered. It's a ten year old. Ten year old XJ8. Nice grill. Metallic silver, immaculate. I took I beat you to it, I took loads. Hmm. Of all these jacks, the back and the front, the sides, the lot. Very good. Mark. <laughs> Mark II uh, Jaguar, uh, 3.4 litre, Doncaster registration, circa about 1959 through 61 from its registration, I'd say. Like a little bit like Inspector Morse. Indeed, absolutely. There a little bit like Inspector Morse, as the lady says. Yes. I'm driving this to Oxford myself. Even though it's manual. He's also registered for Tatton Park. He's got his pass inside his dash. So we shall be seeing more of this guy next week. Next we have private registered plate, XJR, convertible, yeah, yeah. nice red colour, nice motor. Okay. Well this is an XJ6, it's um, about 94ish, uh, CX is Huddersfield, it's in British racing green, it's immaculate, that's what you want. And we have Now, this is absolutely lovely, but it's not what you think. This is a probable replica of a pre-war SS Jaguar with fantastic wire wheels. The registration purports to be London from the early 1950s. It makes me think it's quite an old replica, but it certainly is a replica. It looks fantastic, absolutely, and indicates the pre-war Jaguar sports car heritage when they were unfortunately named SS Jaguar, which later became, of course, infamously 
connected to the remote, sadly. It's good that still make some kind of that kind of mesh. Yeah. You've now got them. Now, right up, bang up to date, the new Jaguar Super Sports car, the F Type, the car that everyone's queuing to drive. Personalised plate, 2013 or 14, convertible in red. Yeah, that'll do for the shopping. Very nice. I don't think I've seen one of these. Not many of them have that. Seen as a future su classic successor to the E-Type. <laughs> it has got off to a good start with overwhelming orders worldwide. There we have a nice X XJR private plate in a mid-metallic light blue. Hard top. Then we have a black XJ6 19 1978 or thereabouts in black and nice. finally parked up just in the last few minutes we have a nice e-type circa 1969 1970 registered convertible in red 4.2 litre liverpool registered with fantastic wire wheels, or why ever not. <laughs> expected more E-types here today. There's all four of them around these days in the west circuit in nice condition. And as we explore the vista of approximately five to six hundred preserved cars of all types, of all nationalities, and a particularly impressive American section, Mercedes section, Triumph Stag section. With cars like this, Jaguar built their early heritage and early reputation. Not many genuine, very few genuine examples survive. But the replicas that have been created are absolutely fantastic. I mean, when you're 120 and going to the next world, you'd like to walk, you'd like to enter the next world in this courtyard, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What do you say? Well, that would be a nice, gentle transition. So that's the 
just re-mentored it and just put up the mills for the wings and the body on the left side Not quite after the 59, but all the seat materials and the lights and the bike and all little bits and pieces. But there's very good second hand panels about it, because the new one. I feel like that's the same. Really? Well, that's, that's quite a clue, isn't it, for that? Yeah. And as you're saying, if you digitise the Elvis series, and if you like to, then you can get out of it. Well, it won't, but it's 59, it's in the army, so it's 59, can't it? Which goes with the rest of the last, no doubt. Good time. They're saying, yeah, that's right, man. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So it came straight back in 1960, you know, the new one. Yeah, Mr. 59. Yeah. Got a couple of beautiful flying lines down. Yeah. Is that wonderful? Yeah. I do believe we have the owner. Yeah. 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 Hello. Right. Yeah. Pop out side. Yeah. 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 I think you heard me saying this is a, an original variation of an XK, isn't it? It is, yes. It's um, one of the last builds. It's seven from the end of the run, and then, of course, they went up to the east side. That's right. And, of course, this was the end of an era. Started in 1948, didn't it? The variations on the film. I don't know how old it was. No, neither was I. I just do the history. <laughs> But that's how it was wrong. You probably heard me say it was the engine was behind on a uh, on a factory. Yes, I believe. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. right. And uh, you know, Mr. 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 Rice and others said, right, I want an engine for this car. Can you design a one? And he had a chief mechanical engineer who had been in the aircraft industry. And he says, leave it with me. And the exchange in the bomb. It was originally designed for the Mark 7, I believe. But That's right. And of course, they couldn't get the, the materials to make the Mark 7, so they used the XK120 as a test bed. Correct. And uh, they took it to the water show, and it was such a hit. Obviously, it was up against things like the Morris Minor. Um, people saw this and thought, I'm having one of them. And the, the cost of it, compared with something like a Ferrari, it was a fraction of the price, but faster. Better made, better looking, so you can't blame people, can you? No, and don't forget it was virtually hand built in those days. Yeah, they were, uh, the first 200 I think were all aluminium. That's right, the rarest apparently is the aluminium body as opposed to steel body. That's right, and uh, if you can afford one of them, I'd like to be your best mate. Well, you heard what I said, and I'm saying 110,000? More like... Uh... 400, 500,000, eh? Yes, for the Allied bodies? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, it's in America, I think, wasn't it, or so? There's been a, a few lately, but the, the very early aluminium bodies ones uh, all seem to be going to America and fetching crazy money. This, you see, this is okay, but the trouble is, it takes it out of the hands as, as us. The feet on the ground it enthusiasm, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the ones in America are uh, they're in a dry condition, they're sore, um, they're not used to the shuffle. This car gets out regularly, uh, I don't care if it rains or not, the car goes out. Now, it's obviously a joy to drive and I do believe they have an aim for him. Uh, Fix. Now, did you hear that? Do you know why? I'll tell you why, because of the registration, am I right? Then you are, certainly. Psychic a lot. <laughs> now, it's a joy, really, so, and of course, it's, it's great, even in today's traffic, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It um, quite surprises a lot of people when they come up behind you and think, oh, no, yeah, we'll just blast past this. And uh, we seem to have a bit of trouble keeping up with them on the country roads. I wonder why. Oh, no idea. It's strange, isn't it? You know, these modern Alvis with all the electronic gizmos to keep them on the road. This is mechanical, and it still sticks to the road. And the best thing about this, this was the first production car with disc brakes. So um, it stops as well as it goes. That's right. I mean, it, that's so that's today's standard, for goodness sake, isn't it? It is, but uh, before this, of course, there were all drum brakes, and uh, you've had a lot of trouble with the 120s and 140s. You just couldn't stop them. That was a, the big problem. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the engine was built for the Mark 7, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. And it was built for the Mark 7, and it was built for the Mark 7. Oh, yes, that's why a lot of them no longer exist. Correct. 
overturned, rolled over, whatever. And the problem with these cars is great, but if you roll them over, there's no security and there's not or nothing to stop you from having a head the problem. No, that's why you're trying to keep on greasy side down. Uh, you're right there. Yes, definitely. Okay. Good, well, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for bringing it in. Thank you, everybody. That's it. Last of the line, as it were, before the E-type was born. So uh, it's nice to see an original example. And as you heard the gentleman say, absolute stratosphere in there. But we're a joy to have. Isn't that lovely? And everybody, we have to move things along. So we're now going to announce the runner-up and the winner here today with the first line of the Jaguar from the Jaguar Enthusiast Club goes to 23 BXX, the XO 150. Well done, sir. That's on by John Howard. Well done, John. Cracking car. Absolutely wonderful. And please remember, don't go home because you will be time to come in the arena to work your show. All right? Oh, go on, you're on, you're on film again. Good. Right, there we are again. We'll have to ask the uh, Jaguar to leave the clip. First of all, the city guard likes to thank all of everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, moving on. Two wheel variants. Motorbikes, scooters, off-roaders. Come on, guys, it's your turn next. Now, the difference with the two-wheelers is that when we've got them in the arena, we're going to choose the bike as show as well, okay? So that's scooters, motorbikes, off-road motorbikes. Any variation of two wheels in the arena, please? After these beautiful Jaguars have vacated, and we'll get them lined up for you to have a look at. If we have time, we might get them to do a circuit on a circuit and uh, see how we go from there. So that's a two-wheel variant, scooters, motorbikes, any variation thereof, off-roaders. You're next in the arena, please. That's a two-wheel variant. That'll keep our judges busy. <laughs> mm. Yes. So we're going to break them down into sections. We have the pre-1930s, 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, right the way up to the great till town. So that's a good cross-section of two-wheel variates. Correct. Have to decipher. By the way, uh, is your crystal ball working? Yes. Have you got it working? I am. Yes. Well done. Where did you get the batteries, Mrs. Lee? I don't think. Oh, you've oh, conjured up the magic again, have you? Yes, ma'am. You'll never tell. I've got my power back. Have you? Your power back? Does it work? Yeah. Do it. No. No. Why not? 